Good morning, everybody. We're here at the Grand Rapids Area Library with Grandma Nancy um, for November's project. It's a beautiful day here at the library. The river looks amazing. The snow on the trees, I'm loving this new snow. I hope you are too. I hope you're getting out there and playing, making snow people, going sledding, all that fun stuff. Helping mom and dad shovel. So it's uh, the start of winter and it feels good. Um, we're going to be doing an owl for November's project. And here's an example. We're going to draw our owl and then we're going to paint it in. I picked owls because um, it seems like in the fall time you see, you tend to see more owls. They're out flying around and sometimes you might hear them at night. So it's very exciting. You should have your uh, kit and um, from the library. So let's take a peek and see what's in this month's kit. All right. Oh, nice. It's a set of 12 colors. It's a big set, 12 watercolors, different colors. That's gonna be great. And then we have two very nice pieces, very nice pieces of paper. I think there's one more thing in our kit. Black crayon, nice sharp black crayon. So that's what we need. Um, you'll want to have a small container of water so you can keep your brush clean. You might even like to have a paper towel so you could wipe extra water off your brush after each cleaning. Maybe depending upon what your workspace is, um, an adult would uh, like to put some newspaper down so you can paint right off the paper. Um, it's uh, washable so if you get it on your clothing it's fine and if you get it on the table it'll come off too but if you just set up the table or your workspace as you want and then we'll get ready I'll set up here too I'm excited all right do you have your place set up all ready to work um, I'm gonna put my paper going the long way because I want to make you know I want most of my space to be covered with the owl himself, okay? So this is what it's gonna look like finished, and he pretty much takes up the whole space, and then we'll talk about doing a background color too. We'll worry about the colors once we get our owl drawn. So I'm gonna look at my paper, and I'll tell you what we're drawing um, each time we're drawing something, because you'll wonder what we're doing. We're gonna start with his talons, okay? The owl's talons are hanging on to um, a branch here. I'm going to show you how to do that so it looks uh, like they really are. You're going to make two W's down here, one about there and then one about here, this one's gonna curve the other way. This one curved this way. This one's gonna curve out the other way. Okay, so now I have two talons. One, two. I wanna make it look like his talon is hanging around the branch. So I'm just going to connect the top of those W's and then I'll connect the bottom and you can maybe even see it coming I'm gonna go all the way to the edge I don't have to make a perfectly straight line because branches aren't perfectly straight right then I'll connect here and I will come all the way out to the edge here so you can see this is the top of the branch that we've made so far. I'll come down here. 
Connect that. Connect there, and then again, all the way out to the edge. So there I have this part of the owl done. His talons hanging on to the branch. Okay, now this is part up here is going to be the main body part. But of course, down here, we're going to have uh, what we would call his tail feathers. So we're going to be going behind the branch. And I'll show you how to do that. Do you see how this line goes behind the branch? Because, of course, his feathers are um, hanging behind the branch as he's hanging on. I'm going to come up here to the top. And I'm going to make, I'm going to do this line slowly so I get it like I want it. I'm gonna curve it and stop right there. So it's a curved line. You can curve yours a little bit more than I did. As you can see on the sample, that one um, was curved more, but it's fine. All right, now I've hit this branch, right? So I want to have the rest of the tail feathers come from behind. So I'm gonna lift my crayon and I'm not going to write on the branch, but I'm just gonna lift my crayon and see where it would come out. And it would come out right about here. And then I'm gonna come down at a little bit of a point, okay? Now I'm gonna make my other side. This one I want more of a curve. And again, it's fine that that one doesn't have as much of a curve. It's fine. And you wanna stop a little bit out from his talons because they're uh, more in the middle of the body. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna look here. Not right, but just pull my crayon down just above the branch, and then it's going to come down about here. Okay. Now you can see on the sample, the tail feathers come to a nice point. Here, I went off the paper. That's okay. I have a nice big owl going, and I'm kind of proud of that, so I'm gonna leave it just like it is. Okay, so now I'm going to make an ear and make a, another one, and actually, I shouldn't have called them ears. They're not ears. An owl's ears are in here, way inside. These are tufts. These are tufts, they're just feathers. So make a tough, make a tough. And then you want to connect those. And I'm gonna round it just a little bit so he has a nice round head. And I do these lines slowly because I wanna get them um, on there really nicely. Okay. So I'll give you a minute. A tuft, a tuft connect. Now we're ready to make the uh, beak. We're going to go right off the paper. So I'm going to come out here just below the tuft and I'm going to curve down to a point. You see I curved down and I just stopped. That's going to be his beak that line and then that line. So now I'm coming over here and I'm gonna curve down. Okay, now it's not quite meeting, so I have to have that, I want the lines to meet. So I had to pull this line down a little bit. That's my beak. Okay, now we're ready to do eyes. 
Owls have really large eyes. Take this line slowly. And they have very large round eyes. But part of the circle is hidden by his um, beak and beak feathers. So there's one circle. And then I'm gonna make another one over here. I want them to be about the same size, but they, they're not gonna be exactly the same size. This one's a little more hidden, right? Okay, now this is gonna be his pupil, and I'm gonna make that as round as I can. You can make him look any direction you want, because the one thing we know about owls is they can look any direction they want. Okay. Now I'm gonna do, and take this slowly, I'm making another line outside here. We really want his eyes to um, look like our old eyes and stand out, so I'm actually adding more. This is a little tricky line to do because you wanna leave um, just a little bit out, just a little bit out like that. And then that what that's going to do is we'll give that some paint because as you look at an owl's eye, they have a little edge, they have a little edge, and then they have a pupil, and then they have a pupil. So now we're gonna color the middle section with black. So leave the pupil, leave the edge. Color the middle section with black. And when you're coloring, you wanna use short, uh, kind of quick, strokes in one direction because that's going to make it look best. You're going to follow the edge of each of these circles and so you basically, I think you can see what's happening. You basically have a white edge you're leaving. This part of the eye is going to be black and you're leaving that too. And we'll paint those and then you'll you'll see what I mean. You really want owl's eyes to stand out because that's such a important thing that we think about with owls. And then you're gonna do the other one. It's kind of a fun little fact I'm gonna share with you. Um, owls cannot spin their head all the way around. A lot of people think they can, but they really can't. They can see all the way behind them. We can't see all the way behind us unless we turn our body around, but they can actually see all the way around because they can see, they can move their head 270 degrees, which means they can see 360 degrees. We can't quite do that. We can turn our head 180 degrees, which is half a circle. So we probably can see 270 degrees. We have to turn our body. But just remember, they really don't spin the head all the way around. Okay, now I'm gonna add one more black line to highlight the eyes. And I just came from the side and I'm gonna end right up there. So I came from the side and I'm gonna end up right there. Now I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna come from the side and I'm gonna go down. I don't wanna end right at the beak and I don't wanna end right at the eye. I wanna end between the beak and the eye. So that looks even more eyeish, right? <laughs> okay, 
Now let's get some feathers. We need feathers. You can see an owl emerging, right? He looks pretty cool, uh, but we want to have feathers now. So we're gonna start with some feathers, just a jaggy line up there. Okay. Then we're gonna start right here and we're gonna make feathers coming right down. And I'm gonna end right there. I don't wanna go down here because we'll make different kinds of feathers down there. And then of course we're going to come on this side, do the same thing and right there, okay? So for the tail feathers, I'm just going to make a line like that. So I went right down to the middle and I'm gonna end at the very end there, right down to the middle. Then I'm gonna come here, probably give it about an inch, but I'm gonna slant it so it ends at the middle. And I'm gonna go about an inch and I'm gonna slant it so it goes in the middle. Then I'm gonna come down here, slant it, and one more time. So those will be our tail feathers, right? Now we're making U's. I'm just making these little U's and these are gonna be feathers right there on his chest. And there we have an owl. I, I'm happy with mine. I hope you're happy with yours too. Okay, now the exciting part. Look at these colors are amazing. These are so beautiful. Look at all of them. Wow. So black, white, brown. That one's purple, blue, it's a magenta. This one looks like a dark green, a uh, really light baby blue, uh, green, yellow, orange, red. That's quite a selection, 12 colors. So what's fun about this owl project is you may use the colors you want to use. You don't have to use just black, brown, and gray but you're welcome to if that's what you want to do. You can add fun colors. He has a blue chest, that's kind of fun. Um, so you do what you want. I would start with um, some of the smaller areas, just so you get a feel of the paintbrush. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the eyes. And here, I painted these eyes yellow and then this outside yellow, and that's fine. You can do that. You can use other colors too if you want. The one thing I would say here is, because owl's eyes stand out, you would want to use uh, bright colors. I'm gonna try the orange. Now, these are um, new paints again, so what you wanna do is make sure you have uh, plenty of water, and you're gonna wanna uh, they, they have a seal on top of them, so you want to break that seal till you get at the paint. But you do that gently with water. Okay, so I'm going to do the outside first because I might end up changing my mind. I might decide I want that other part to be yellow. And I'm going to come around. Come around here. I like that. And let's see. I'll do this one. Y 
You can do whatever colors you want. Honestly, it's going to be. Wash my brush off. I think I want yellow in those circles. The yellow is really bright. And again, whatever color you the, want to use, <laughs> the magenta might be kind of cool there too. So washing your brush, maybe getting the extra water off, unless you're using a new color, which I'm gonna now be using a new color. And I'm going to pick um, orange again. And I'm gonna do one section at a time, remember? You wanna do one section at a time. So I'm gonna do his head. And I just picked orange because I wanted to repeat that orange. You don't have to, you can do whatever color you want. And I'm gonna work a little quickly so you guys can see what I'm doing. And you can work on yours at your own pace. And then we'll um, probably come back here in a minute. You do want plenty of water. And you know, it's nice you can go, if your uh, paint hits the black crayon, it's okay because it's going to, uh, the wax from the crayon just repels the paint. So I'm gonna go right over those um, feather lines I made there, okay? I am gonna show you one more thing before I pause out of here. And I wanna show you uh, you don't have to do this, but it's so fun if you want to try it. I'm going to show you how you can mix colors when you have um, a paint tray like this. Usually when you open your paint tray, there are sections that are divided, and those sections are for you to um, actually mix paints. And then when you're done with your paints, you can click the cover off, and uh, Grown Up can help you wash this. Once it's dried, you just put it back on. So these kind of paint boxes actually have places for you to mix colors instead of mixing right on top. What happens if you mix right on top is you end up making some really muddy colors um, and you might like, for example, lose your brighter colors. So I'm going to show you how we do that. This white hasn't been used yet. This white is white. So that means you're going to wanna to be really careful when you go into the white that you don't um, have any color on your brush. Do you see how I'm just taking some white? I'm loading up my paintbrush, that's what I'm doing. I'm loading up my paint brush with paint and then I'm putting it over here. It looks like it's not doing anything, but it really is. Okay, so there's that. Now, see if you can guess, oh, I didn't wash it well enough, but it's okay. See if you can guess what color I might be making. I had white and I had black. And when you mix white and black together, you get a gray. Let's see what it looks like. See, I got a gray. I'm gonna probably need to make some more of my gray, but I'm gonna do around both the eyes with that gray. And I'm just gonna grab some more white. And do you see? You can do this with any colors. You could mix yellow and red, and you might get a different variation of the orange they give you, which is always fun. You don't have to do this though. It takes a little time, it's a little time consuming. There, I made it a better gray because I put a little bit more black and it needed a little bit more black. I wanted to be careful with the black though, um, so I added that slowly. All right, you can keep painting yours. I will keep painting mine and uh, we'll just pause the video for a minute. All right, so I'm doing the background. I finished my owl and I feel really good about it. I like the colors, lots of colors to pick from. 
Um, now I'm going to do the background. And I started to do it in yellow. So I'm going to do yellow. I like that yellow, it's really bright. I think your background, um, again, you can do what you want, but it seems like a bright background really makes the owl pop off your artwork. So I would try that. Now I'm gonna try something a little bit different that you don't have to do. I'm gonna go in with another color and kind of just put a little bit on it. You want it to be wet. I'm gonna give a little bit. So maybe this owl is sitting in a, a sunset or something, right? So I'm just gonna put a little orange on top, but I'm not gonna go all on top of my yellow with orange. And again, you don't have to do it, just if you want to. You could even do these two sections, one color, and then the big up there, another color. Um, this could be green down here to represent the forest and then a blue sky. But I kind of like this uh, yellow and orange sunset idea. And again, it's, you want it to be wet when you come in there with the orange so it will blend in. You want it to be... There you go. And then I'll just leave it like that. Now the one thing about this owl, I can paint <laughs> upside down, right? I can paint upside down and it makes it easier so I'm not reaching my arm across. Now I'm gonna do some of that orange because I decided I like it. Up here too, but I don't want to paint my whole background yellow and then add the orange because that yellow will be dry and the orange won't blend as well. So I have a pretty wet yellow going. You can probably see that. I'm just going to stop there, pick up a little bit of orange and get in here. Yes, that's good. I don't want to overdo. That's the tricky thing about this. Once you start blending, it looks so cool, you want to keep going. But we're going to try not to overdo it too much. Okay, now that section, whoops, I didn't wash my brush, but it's okay because I'm blending these colors anyway. Oh yes, I like that. I'm gonna turn my paper again. Getting lots of yellow. You're thinking about what colors you want? I was thinking um, the blue would be really pretty, the magenta, the purple. Maybe the purple with the blue would be good. Um, the green with the blue. There's just so many great options of what you can do when you get this big of a set of watercolors. So I'm hoping you'll use your second sheet to do yet another kind of a bird. You could maybe grab some books from the library and uh, bird books, there's a lot of bird books here and then pick a Another bird you want to do. An eagle would be fun, a loon would be fun. Turkey, Thanksgiving's coming up, you could do that. Well, I like it. I like my owl in a sunset. Just one more section left, and I'll go here where I maybe missed a little bit. It's amazing how much 
painting you can get done just by dipping once. These brushes really hold a lot of the color, so you don't have to dip too much. My water stayed clean. I never had to um, clean it out, but you might have had to. When it starts getting too mucky, you wanna get clean water. I like it on the edge because then that looks like the sun is coming. Sun is setting right behind him and he's getting ready to go out because that's generally, owls are uh, mostly nocturnal and you'll see them out at night or hear them. You don't hear them flying because their feathers uh, prevent that sound. Oh, I like that. All right, I hope you had a good time and I hope you had fun with your owl. boys and girls. Um, I hope you have a great, had a great time making your owl today and that you will continue um, doing more. I was thinking about all you can do with this great um, uh, tin of paints. You can do all kinds of sunsets and flowers, trees, just some really beautiful pictures and I hope that you will um, do that. Thank you for joining us today at the Grand Rapids Area Library. I wish you a very wonderful Thanksgiving vacation with your families, and we will see you in January. We won't have a December uh, meeting, but I hope you keep making art.